This is Vinny Mad Dog Lopez, and you are listening to No Good Music. It's all good. We have a special guest with us today. He's a fellow Jersey guy and drummer who's worked with and toured with Bruce Springsteen on his first two albums. Let's welcome to No Good Music, Mr. Vinny Mad Dog Lopez. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> and, and we can call you Vinny, right? You can call me Vinny. Yeah. Okay. The other, the other night, somebody came up to me and say, hey, sir, can I? And I said, no, sir, where's my dad? I'm Vinny. Someone, yeah, someone called me sir at the grocery store. Same thing to That's Jim. Right. Yeah. There's I said there's stuff. two things. They either confused him with Sir Paul. Yeah, right. Or uh, <laughs> or he's just getting older. Yeah. They won't, yeah getting older, yes. Yeah. <laughs> sir Paul. <laughs> oh, that's right. We're, we're New Jersey guys, too. We grew up in New Jersey. Okay. Uh, more central New Jersey. I'm in Washington. But you okay. in Western, near the near Delaware River, farther that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I live I live in Hamilton right now. Okay. I was gonna ask you that. You I grew up in there. Neptune, right? Yeah, I grew up in Neptune. Went to Neptune High School. Yeah, we're about an well, we're about an hour and twenty minutes from Neptune. Yeah. So oh, I, I know where we <laughs> I used to go trout fishing up there. There was a few yeah. spots my friend to take. Oh, okay. Me. Nice. <laughs> I was down in Neptune uh, for one show for um the mercy seat with gordon gano from the femmes and it was at the green parrot oh yeah man i yeah. used to live right, right next door to the green parrot oh wow <laughs> I put my grandmother and there was a retirement community right behind it it's gone now. <laughs> but it was a retirement community there and i lived there and the green parrot at that point when, this is when i was a kid it was just good pizzas, oh. you know. They didn't have music, or they didn't have any of that stuff going on when I was yeah. a kid. That came later on. Yeah, yeah. yeah that that's been there for a while. That place. Yeah, it's a nice place. Did you start out playing drums, or was was there another instrument you maybe started out with before drums? I um, no, it's like in third grade, joined a drum and bugle corps, and played a bugle. Okay. Wow. And then graduated to a valve bugle that had one valve. Mm-hmm. And then they gave me another valve because I was okay <laughs> at it. <laughs> Zero, <laughs> one, two. Have this one, and then you have this slip valve over here. It made other noise, you know. Yeah. And I never took any music classes or anything. So to get my slip valve, I had to go in, and he handed me sheet music, and I was supposed to play what was right there. So I just played a bunch of crap on. It. <laughs> with feeling was on that yeah i was yeah. talking about so but i got my slip valve and then i was like a, a solo guy it was cool mm-hmm. yeah. but i was i was little then and when i was in drum and bugle corps there were the brothers Dieter and abel no they were the abel brothers Dieter and they, they were their name last name was abel but mm-hmm. anyway they mm-hmm. were the drummers in the band and I got, I went over to their house a few times when I was a kid, and they had their drum set set up in the house, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, and they'd play. I didn't play. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't start playing until I met my friend Buzzy uh, when I was mm-hmm. in eighth grade, who taught me really how to do everything. Yeah, that's awesome. So you had it, you had it in you, you had the rhythm in you, you just needed to get it out into the, into I the. Love, I love singing. I sang in. In many, many shows, I went to a Catholic uh, grammar school in mm-hmm. Asbury Park, mm-hmm. Holy Spirit School, and they had these mission shows to raise money for the missionaries, you know, mm-hmm. and I was one of the, I sang by self. They, I said, no, I don't want a piano. Mm-hmm. And I sang Trini Lopez song <laughs> in the mission show. Yeah. <laughs> That's when I started spelling my name when I was a kid. V I N I. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because it, he he was Trini Lopez. T R I. Trini. And so I went. Oh, Trini, Vinny. Oh. And I thought that's a unique spelling, spelling right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So is your the real spelling is V I 
N N Y or I E oh. Vincent. I'm going to no, guess Bill Vincent. Collins, the way I spell it. Oh yeah, I yeah. Am. Okay. I, Does your birth certificate say name. Vincent? No, that's. My, my other dudes. <laughs> that's good. You're doing what you want. Were you, were you in any bands before you joined? Um, I mean, we're going to get to Steel Mill. Yeah, let's. But, we can. But were you in any bands in high school? Any bands before that? I know. I know Bruce was in the Castiles in high school. Mm-hmm. Right, and I had. I was in a band called Sunny and the Starfire. Okay, and, and we, we we were the house band at the Hullabaloo in Asbury Park, so we got to play in other Hullabaloo booths. Yeah. And in those days, there was there was a Hullabaloo in Middletown. We played in New London, Connecticut. We played up in mm-hmm. New York State at Hullabaloo's. There was one in Freehold where the Castiles yeah. played, and there was in Tom's River, but. We didn't necessarily go play at those other ones because it was very clicky back then. Mm-hmm. And the people from there didn't necessarily like it that we were from Asbury Park playing <laughs> in Freehold. What are oh, you yeah. doing here? <laughs> yeah, wow. And we knew, you know. But we played a band battle against the Castiles. Okay. 1965 or whatever it is. And their Castiles set up right next to us. Now, we don't know from no Bruce Springsteen who the hell is these guys, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? Just the guy named Bruce. And yeah. when we did, everybody got to do three songs of 25 bands around this hockey rink. Mm. <laughs> and everybody did three songs. And they started to announce it. And they were good. Castiles were good. And Sonny, we were, we were pretty good. We did it a lot. And when they announced the winners, the third place band was somebody. Then they announced Sonny and Starfire second place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're going. We're congratulating the Castiles because we figured they were going to win, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. But now, this <laughs> other band called the Rogues that won okay. the, the whole thing. Wow. And we were like, but we didn't, I didn't meet Bruce then, you know. Okay. Was, uh, and then I, I was in God, the Moment of Truth with Gary Talent. You know, we've, we've been mm-hmm. playing since we were in high school together. Oh, wow. Uh, all these guys. And there was no Bruce around. Man. He was in mm-hmm. his own world, you mm-hmm. know, with Georgie and those guys out, out in Freehold. And Bruce had too. He was up in Middletown. Mm-hmm. He was like the Middletown hullabaloo guys. And the rogues were from, like, Middletown. <laughs> <laughs> so they won that band. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's that's uh, good education on that the, was... the hullabaloo. I, I, they should have got together and had a, a festival, you know, mm-hmm. hullapalooza. <laughs> and and now, uh, we were all losers. Yeah, losers. <laughs> all the losers. That's good. Losers, never gooses. Yeah. And that was a big thing in like, well, I know the 50s, maybe the 60s, maybe, uh, playing skating rinks. Because I just watched the Buddy Holly story. And okay. I think one of their first shows was at a, a skating rink. Yeah, which... no, that's, that, that's what this was. It was a skating rink. Yeah. But it, yeah. it was, and it was something. We were tough for that thing. Mm-hmm. And I think we wore our shark skin suits that day. We were, <laughs> we were pretty smooth. Wow, I'm trying to picture wow. that. People don't do that anymore. So, um, no. so, so Steel Mill, I just uh, just was reading a little bit, uh, doing some protest songs. Uh, who was who was writing who was writing the songs for uh, Steel Mill? Oh, Bruce wrote all the songs. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Bruce wrote everything. You know, like, see, now here's I'm going to give you a little backstory. Mm-hmm. Danny Federici and myself worked for a guy named Bill Chinnick. Bill Chinnick was a singer, songwriter, did original music. He was from the Jersey Shore. We made a band in 60, end of 66, 67. We were called the Downtown Tangiers Rock and Rhythm and Blue Band. Okay. okay. And we went around. And we, we actually did like a, a 40 city tour for the Electric Circus. Uh, and we went all over the Midwest doing our music, doing original music, okay? And some of that was protest music. Mm-hmm. We had a, we had a, Wendell John was in there, and, well, I'll tell you, that's that's not important. But <laughs> the, the, it, it's, it's really not. So after that band broke up, which in, it's inevitable at times when bands break up, Danny and I still wanted to play together. We were having fun. And we didn't want to uh, go back and play at the Dew Drop Inn doing the doors. Mm-hmm. We were doing yeah. original music. So yeah. we were looking for people that we could with 
that are, that wanted to do original music. So when I met Bruce, actually met him, it was at an Italian American club in Long Branch, New Jersey, mm-hmm. and he was playing with his band Earth. Earth. And, right. Yeah, Earth, and yeah. Uh, my help and my friend Chuck Dillon was no longer with us. But anyway, we went to see them. So when I heard him, I went, wow, this, this guy's pretty good. You know, so I went up to him and I said, hey, Bruce, uh, I'm Vinny Lopez. And he goes, yeah, you you used to play with Sonny, right? And I said, yeah, because <laughs> Bruce used to come with Sonny to play. That's mm-hmm. how good Sonny is, okay? So I said, I said, yeah, I play with Sonny. And we talked a little bit. And then I said, listen, we're looking for somebody to, to play with me and Danny. Do, do you write any songs? I mean, think about that. He's written 10 million songs yeah. now. <laughs> and, but I said, you write, well, I've written a couple. Yeah. So I said, well, hey, we jam at the upstage down in Asbury Park, you know, so why don't you come down? Maybe we can jam and see if we can make something. And then a month later or so, Danny and I went to the upstage and there was Bruce and little Vinny and Bobby Williams, who played drums on the stage at the upstage. And we were there like, yep, listen to this stuff. And then we asked Tom Potter for a special jam at the end mm-hmm. with just us guys. Yeah. Little Vinny Roslin, Bruce, myself, and Danny Federici. And as soon as we got on that jam, we went downstairs and made a band. Wow. And it was called Child and Neil Melbourne. Bruce wrote all those songs. Their songs... Mm-hmm. There's, there's a couple of them that I wish I had. They're, they're not on tape anywhere. No, that no. Early days weren't protest songs. They were just good rock and roll songs. Mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm. But yeah, I just wrote those protest songs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, the, so yeah, so that jam, you remember that. You you have a memory of that being uh, on, being great. Like that was a, that was. Oh, a, well, uh, yeah, we didn't know what we were doing. And yeah, we put at the upstage. It, it was different there. It was because every everyone that went up on that stage, it had to be cleared with by Tom Potter, the owner. Mm-hmm. And I house drummer and Big Bobby was a house drummer. Mm-hmm. And you when you came in, you'd be a band. OK, okay what do you play, Tom? And say, oh, I play bass. He goes, OK, go over and sit with Vinny for a little while over here. Mm-hmm. And then they, he'd send a guitar player from some other band over here. And we jam- and we just go on stage and play stuff, mm-hmm. you know. So that's what we did uh, when we actually got to jam together. But it was good having Federici and Bruce and me, and because yeah. I sang, Bruce was singing. It was good. It was fun. It was mm-hmm. fun, and we became what we wanted. And you got to sit. You were singing at that point as well. So that's that's well, I, something. Yeah, yeah. I sang for years before I ever learned how to play a drum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, you know, that's kind of what mm-hmm. I do. So you, at one point, you were uh, you had a job cleaning barnacles off of boats, correct? And <laughs> I worked at a I worked at a a, a boat yard down okay. in Point Pleasant on the mm-hmm. and uh, that's where I was working when Bruce called and said, "Hey, I got a deal with Columbia Rick." He called yeah. there, but it was we put boats out for the summer. We had them all we'd haul them out of the water, or you clean them up, you paint them, you do it. They go back in the yard, and then one by yeah. one we. Mm-hmm. back water you know and i got good at refinishing things by working at that boat yard and i know how to mm-hmm. cut wood that's for sure yeah so, so when were were you um was still mill still performing like when bruce got the recording contract did still mill no, just uh by that time yeah. there was no steel mill there was okay. no steel mill steel okay. mill broke up it didn't break up Steel Mill just Bruce said, I got I wanna and he asked me and he asked Gary to be in his new Bruce Springsteen band mm-hmm. and to change the direction of the music that he was doing. And so mm-hmm. this became the Bruce Springsteen band. In my estimation, what happened is people the world revolved around Steel Mill mm-hmm. for certain people. Yeah. For a lot of them. When Steel Mill wasn't anymore, and the Springsteen band came out with the horns and the girls. Uh, it was different, so people didn't come really to see us anymore. And, yeah, and it kind of fell apart. That's when Bruce drifted off by himself. Mm-hmm. He went to California and he came back. And Tinker introduced him to Mike Appel, and then uh, uh, you know Mike brought him to CBS. 
But when it came down to him doing the recordings uh, for CBS, they he want, they wanted to have maybe a band. They just wanted him mm-hmm. and his yeah. songs. Okay. And uh, he said, well, on these certain songs, we're going to have these guys. You know, yeah. and they yeah. finally agreed to it. A lot of them songs on the first album, it's just me and Bruce. Oh, wow. Because the basic tracks are the basic tracks, and he played the piano, and he, he, he sang, I sang. Yeah. You know, yeah. Clarence came in, did uh, Spirit Night, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all of a sudden, this other thing started rolling, started happening. So, mm-hmm. Right. You, you and Bruce had the base of that, uh, excuse the pun, but you had the, the, the basic element there, and then the others came in and joined in. Yeah. Uh, there's a total of, uh, total of eight. Uh, is a total of eight people uh, in E Street Band? Like, uh, there's a lot of people coming and going. That's what I, that's what I'm saying. Well, we the basic band was five guys. Okay. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Uh, and we traveled a lot with just the five. Yeah. You know, yeah. Myself, Danny, Gary, Bruce, and Clarence. Okay. And Dave Sanchez came in, so we're we're six. Mm-hmm. Basic five. And that six, that's and it. <clears throat> yeah. There was no more. That was yeah. it. Later on, maybe after I was out. The, they got you know other mm-hmm. players in there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Susie on the uh, Susie uh, Suki on the violin, you know stuff like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, different things there. Yeah. Did you, did you tour um, for the first album? I mean, what was the reception? Uh, we toured. Uh, Morton James Brown was on the road. We were <laughs> okay. <laughs> tour tour. We went to every little place you can imagine just, just to promote just, the album uh, because of the record deal too. Wherever people were listening, yeah, we yeah. went there and and played, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, we a lot, and then the second album it was like uh, it almost dropped off the face of the earth. Wow, you know, for us because really? uh, different management at CBS. So there was a lot of stuff, yeah, yeah, uh, which I don't know about. I'm just a drummer. Yeah. <laughs> Stay out of it. So yeah, that's that's uh yeah. that's news. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's something new to hear. Yeah, the first so uh fine memories that the touring on that first album and and uh sounds like a real uh real exciting well, time. We did you know we we knew what we were doing playing. Yeah. You know, we rehearsed the song, we know what that that is yeah. that's not it. But just uh getting used to going and driving and doing the oh, show. Yeah. And driving and get maybe someplace where you're gonna stay. Like yeah. no maybe. Yeah. We had yeah. a few drivers so we could switch and just keep driving. That's yeah. how we did stuff. Mm-hmm. Was Still Mill playing back to Still Mill, were they were you mostly playing local shows? Did you, you didn't travel that much with that band? We we and, we, we played Richmond, Virginia, played down in yeah. Nashville. Yeah. But not yeah, as much did. as when the first album came out. Yeah. You're yeah. saying. No, no. Then oh, it was like the first album every day with yeah, nine yeah. days straight and two day yeah, break. Full time, you know? full time work and more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize in today's uh, with technology that you were relying on a manager and uh, and a bus driver to mm-hmm. find you a pillow for the night, <laughs> find you a place well, to no, lay your head. Bus we didn't have no bus driver. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were the driver. Yeah. And, okay. And road maps. We did that Chicago tour. Chicago flew everywhere. We drove everywhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. We're all in one vehicle. All right. Uh, all in- yeah. Well, we had the equipment <laughs> van mm-hmm. and we had this Danny station van and the station and that wagon. was nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and um, that, that, that was it. But uh, me and Clarence were drivers mainly because we didn't like Danny driving because he went 200 miles an hour everywhere. Uh, so we wanted to stay alive. Yeah, you want to stay alive. Yeah. <laughs> Let's live so through this tour. We, we would let him drive sparing. Let him sleep. <laughs> Let's talk about the second album uh, a little bit. Uh, one of my favorite songs, of course, is Rosalita. We, lo- we both love it, yeah. yeah. And um, Sure. I also noticed you on the first song, you're playing a cornet. At least that's what Wikipedia yeah. says. <laughs> well, that's that's... Actually, because I played the valve bugle and stuff, mm-hmm. I did actually play the coronet. Mm-hmm. And I didn't own one, but Gary Talent, his brother, had an old one. 
Mm-hmm. So he brought that to the studio and handed that to me. Everybody that was just there picked up <laughs> some kind of horn. Albie Talone played the saxophone, baritone saxophone, and we just made up that that beginning. The, the beginning is like to me, it's like Big Ben. Yeah. He just made it up. That's great. Yeah, yeah. There's such, um, when I listen to uh, Rosalita, it's such uh, a, di- a diverse, I play drums as well. It's so diverse in its its presentation. You go from here to there. So it's such a high energy, um, you know, even in the studio recording of it. Uh, what, what's, what's up with that? What was it like, uh, Rosalita? Well, Rosalita, we rehearsed the, the basic song at Tank Surfboard Factory in the Highlands. They had a back room with like a studio. And we really learned it there, uh, which we learned a whole bunch of the other right. stuff. But when it got into the studio, we'd go in and do the what we just learned and just played, you know, we went through it right away. And then they'd say, come on and listen. We'd go and listen. And somebody go, yeah, but I hear this other mm-hmm. thing going on right here. Yeah. Or, yeah. or, you know, there was different parts that came not in the original version. Mm-hmm, right. So we, somebody'd say that, and we go, "Oh, hey, wait a minute!" And Bruce would come up and him up and up, and then we'd go in and record the song again. <laughs> right. But it happened a few yeah. different times. Right. So right. at the end, you know, and I, and one thing I remember from that session is that Mike Appel wanted me to play a lot. Mm-hmm. So he'd be in the booth. Now I'm in the drum booth. Mm-hmm. And all I can see is a little Mike Appel over here. Everybody else is over here in the studio. And he's going. Yeah, he's telling you to get aggressive. Get to, get to, to let it loose. Yeah. Well, that's what yeah. he did. And he kept going. He did. So I didn't stop. Right. Right. You know, that's how Rosalita came around. Right, right. And there's such high energy, but but then you bring it down. You know, there's just, there's really a lot of diversity uh in that song, I, oh, I, I, yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. So it's like my a, daddy don't dig me. Yeah, because <laughs> they're playing right. a rock and roll band. They're playing that rock and roll band. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The record good company stuff. just gave me a big advance. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I just love it. Yeah, yeah. I like it when I saw him. I forget where I saw him, but he goes, "Give my dad a chance." I just got my picture on the cover of Time and Newsweek, he says. Mm, yeah. Instead mm, of yeah. <laughs> yeah. tell your daddy not to freak. <laughs> I just got my picture over Time and Newsweek. Yeah. <laughs> so. What's amazing is that that song is over seven minutes long. I think it's seven minutes and th- uh, three seconds or something. But mm-hmm. but it got a lot the of radio, radio airplay. Right, right. You know, for a seven-minute yeah. song. And, yeah, and that's, that's, yeah, that's you know, good stuff. I've heard of. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. remember hearing that song for the first time on the radio? No, not really. Not, we, no. we listened okay. listen to full games and stuff while we were okay. riding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> After the first two albums, you, you either, I don't know if you want to tell us, you either left the band or Bruce decided he was going to reform. He wanted to go in another way. I wasn't the guy he wanted. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. he was. We parted ways there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so what okay. Was, I'm still. Yeah. <laughs> so what was uh, what was some things that you focused on like at that time? Where, what did you do at that point? Got in another band. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Of course. Of course. Yeah. I you know, got in a yeah. band. Uh, we were called Cold Blast. So we had uh, Ricky Desarno on guitar, John LaRachi on bass, Steve Schrager on drums, and me on drums. We had two drummers, okay. a bass oh. player. And Wow. Uh-huh. Dr- drum kit or other percussion? Two drum kits? Two drum kits. Two drum kits, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Two drum kits. We we had the cymbal set up so he could hit mine and I Oh his. right next to each other. Great, great. Okay. Right next right yeah. next to each other. Yeah, yeah. We had, so... a, we had a skeleton between us, Bones Boys that kept us together. Bones uh-huh. Boy was like this on the between the yeah. two drums. Yeah. I don't think I've seen that with the you know, together. You know, well, yeah, probably not a good. lot of we were Creative. like the first Playing the pony, one of the first bands ever played the Stone Pony in '74. Oh, wow, Gold Blast and Steel. Yeah. Begged and begged and begged, and they finally let us play <laughs> yeah. on a Sunday afternoon, and we did good. <laughs> so Bruce is currently on tour, and I read that sometimes he will still he will bring you out 
to do some of the songs that are on the first two albums. So, is that true? Once in a while. Yeah. 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 Are you planning on Every seeing Bruce on this tour? Uh, we went to the very first show in Tampa. Oh, okay. So that's, that's where we live. We live down by. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, here, but um, yeah, no. And I, when I, you know, I wanted to go to see the show. Tinker was going. Tinker called me. Says, "Oh, you gotta go." I said, "Okay." So I went with Karen mm-hmm. and Tinker and Dawn and myself. Mm-hmm. But one thing, they were under a total bubble. There was no <laughs> going backstage. Oh, really? There was no anything happened, and they were restricted for medical to, reasons for COVID yeah. test every day on yeah. this tour you're talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On this tour. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah. I didn't, you know, I said to the fellow I talked to George, you know, I said, George, we want to come if it's possible to say hello. Great. But I, yeah. that's not mm-hmm. what we're there. And I don't want to play. I want to hear the okay. band. That's what I, you know, mm-hmm. because, you know, I'll tell you at this point in my life, Everywhere I go, if there's a band playing, I got to go play with them. They're going yeah. to say, you got to come play with us. <laughs> <laughs> this point in my life, I really would love to just go hear my friend play. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I never do that without sitting behind them. You're gonna oh, have, yeah. you're gonna have to go Agneto. You're gonna have to put uh, tuck that hair in a skull cap. And yeah, you're gonna have to go, you know, put the shades on. Uh, I can't do that. I'm kidding I don't you. have any hair anymore. <laughs> I'm kidding you. You got more than me. <laughs> when was the last time you played with Bruce? Some oh, years God. ago? I think uh, there was a thing at the Wonder Bar, a, a benefit thing. Okay. And, uh, we were playing, and then Bruce was there. Nick, Nicky Adia was, man, we did a little something okay. at the Wonder Bar. But the, uh, I did a, a show in Philly with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was a hot, hot, hot day. Yeah. It was uh, pretty <laughs> Incredible, and they played over four hours. Wow! But Jeez. even if so, I didn't play <laughs> drums. Work. I just, I just played a tambourine and sang. Oh, mm-hmm. oh good. Which yeah, I, yeah. which I was happy about. Yeah, yeah. Or Max, yeah. I thought, yeah. Yeah. it was like yeah. ninety-eight degrees. <laughs> yeah, it's a. You're, the, some people don't know that it's hard work. Oh no! Oh, I, I don't know how Max does it. He's such a workhorse. It blows my mind. What are you doing uh, lately to keep yourself busy? What? Uh, what have you been up to lately? Well, down here, I play with a fellow named Tony Hall, and he plays guitar. And I play my snare drum with some brushes and sing with him, and we're called the Hula Hula Boys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mm-hmm. like that. But when I'm back up in New Jersey, uh, I play with Gary Kavko, John Bryce, and Frank Frash, and we are, are the wonderful winos. So <laughs> when I... When I go back up there, that's that's what we do. We're not world beaters. We don't have to play every day. Yeah. That's not what we want to do. Yeah. Yeah. But we do like doing good music, and that that's always the key. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hula boys down south mm-hmm. in Florida, and and winos, so, so you, winos up north. Yeah. I saw Sarasota Slim last night down at Katiki. My friend was playing keyboards with him. A pretty great. good little blues band. Yeah, yeah. That's great to get out and see see shows like that. I like yeah. the. My wife and I we, we went in September to, to um, see the uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, it, and okay. it was mm-hmm. and it was at uh, PNC where the or the Citizens Bank Park where the Phillies play. But I said to myself, this is probably the last arena concert because yeah. I have hearing problems, the crowd. Okay. So I just oh, love seeing the smaller. Yeah, yeah, we I've given up arena shows too a few years back. Just did you see that? Uh, did you did you go go into the place where all the bars are? I forget what it's called, right across from the stadium. Uh, it's right in the middle of all the stadiums. Yeah, we didn't go in. But I know there's restaurants there and bars. Yeah, mm-hmm. Chicky and Pete's. Or something. Could be right there. The, the Better giant places. bar. Yeah, they're. Uh, uh, it, it's. Uh, I just got a message from it yeah. popped up right on your screen. I'm going. Oh back. yeah, we can't but see anyway, it. <laughs> oh, it's uh, it's hard there, and that's that, that's where yeah. I did, uh, the tambourine and sang was was there at that stadium. Okay, you know, yeah, yeah. the the baseball stadium. Yeah, it, it's just too too big of a crowd for me. Well, I mean, Tampa we... to me was was crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, it was good seeing all those people there. 
but it was kind of scary on the other mm-hmm. hand too. So yeah, with everybody there is just yeah, hooting and hollering. And, mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 Wild. something, especially <laughs> nowadays. Yeah, with yeah. this coast stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so Sarasota, Sarasota is treating you right. Is that what you said? Well, well, I know Sarasota Slim. He was nice. He, oh, was Sarasota guy. Slim. I thought you were Sarasota Slim. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted to say. We we live a little north of Sarasota. We live okay, above, okay. Above by Clearwater. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Are you are you watching the Are you in the football at all? Are you watching the Super Bowl? Oh, we're watching the game. Okay. Yeah. Dawn, he he likes the Chiefs. But oh, really? Hold on, you hear her? No, no, I think she just likes Mahomes. It's I think it's just Mahomes. <laughs> we live, we live <laughs> there by the Eagles. So mm-hmm. we are Eagle fans. Oh, good. Eagle. <laughs> yeah, I got my, there it is. my mug here. On the video. There you go. You got your mug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got an existential question, <laughs> though. We start talking about the Chiefs got Dawn yelling. That was cool. I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I got an existential question. Probably one last question. Um, what do you think about the uh, the UFO that was shot down on the border of Alaska and uh, <laughs> and Canada? <laughs> you know, this is this is dating the uh, the interview here, but uh, yeah, it's a they UFO like, to brought it down. They need hmm? the Hakawi Indians, Chief <laughs> Wild Eagle. Yes. This is balloon. <laughs> <laughs> balloon. <laughs> they shoot the balloon. Mm-hmm. The yeah, Indians. yeah, yeah. This I don't well, even know if this was a balloon. It's like something the size of a car. Yeah, they got a handle. Yeah, they got the a handle on it. Yeah, that's what I think. Of, yeah. You know, however they do it, that's unbeknownst to any of us. How they get a handle on it? But they, they said it's now. happened before, but it's it's just over like a week or two now. They're all popping it. Like, what's going on? Right, yeah. but they're going to go find yeah. it, and I don't know what it's going to be. They shot yeah. this one, you know, in Alaska down. So, well, we'll yeah, in Yukon. Yeah. So they're they're going to, but they'll they'll collect it all, and uh, they're getting the data, so they'll know what's going on with it. Who yeah. knows? It could be just uh, somebody's private. Thing they send up Shot. for their There could own. be tiny little aliens no. on it, and <laughs> we, don't, we don't know. Well, I don't expect any aliens to, to be involved with it. Okay. I think they're earthlings that are okay. involved with it. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'd like to find <laughs> out. So. If you're the aliens, take some of these people away, please. Yeah. 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 So, Vinny, um, I want to thank you. It was great talking to you. For our listeners, oh. um, where would people find you? I know you're on Facebook. Uh... Facebook, uh, mainly. I do Twitter, but I just really lay in the weeds there and watch all the people go nuts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but <laughs> but Facebook is mainly where you'll find me and you can talk to me. And if you, yeah, that's where I if found If you try and friend me, I think it's hard. You got to send me a message. Yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. then I can actually friend you, mm-hmm. you know, because friending okay. me, yeah. I think, is tough. I actually got banned on Facebook. You, last, you did? Last, uh, for my birth, for my yeah. birthday. I had so many people wishing me birthdays. So what I do is I go like and thank you. Oh, you like you too know, many I would things. go like each yeah. and every one of them. Oh, yeah. They banned me because wow. I liked too much That's, stuff. Wow, yeah. you're too grateful. <laughs> uh, Just, I don't like anything. <laughs> I don't like anything or anything. That's it for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you gave uh, you gave our listeners uh, the names of your bands, past and present. So uh, yeah, they can find you and follow you. And uh, I wrote some stuff down there. Look you up and um... one. Let me say one thing with the Hula Hula Boys. Yeah. Down here, Tony Hall. He's a magnificent guitar player. He knows millions mm-hmm. of songs. He's different than any act you see down here. Mm-hmm. He plays by himself. You know, I don't always play, but if you get a chance to see Tony Hall, okay, way cool. Yeah. All right, Tony Hall for those in yeah. Florida. I hope you have a good day today, rest of the day. Yeah. Down there in Florida. Yeah, I'm glad good it worked ball. out. I'm glad it worked out. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. It's great talking to you. Yeah, Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, have a great, have enjoy a great day. The rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bye.
You've been listening to No Good Music. Today's interview was produced and edited by Jim Thatcher and recorded via Zoom at the Did You Say 7 Studios in Washington, New Jersey. You can find No Good Music on Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, Pandora, and almost anywhere you listen to podcasts.